a major step towards reopening the port of Baltimore after the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Overnight, the largest crane on the eastern seaboard arrived on site to help lift debris from the water. It is a huge undertaking. Officials say the section of the bridge trapping the cargo ship Dolly weighs between three and 4,000 tons. We're also learning more about how one of the survivors of the collapse made it out alive. Chris Van Cleve is in Dundalk, Maryland. Chris, good morning. Well, good morning. That crane can lift about 1,000 tons, but many of the pieces that we saw yesterday when we got an up-close look weigh far more than that. So before they can start moving anything off the water, they're going to have to cut the debris into smaller pieces. It's going to be a long, hard effort. This, as we're learning, chilling details of how one of the people survived the collapse of the Key Bridge. From the water, an up-close look at the mission facing the Army Corps of Engineers. Pictures don't do it justice. So you're looking at a vessel that weighs nearly 95,000 tons that was sailing at about uh, 10 knots when it had its collision with the pier. General Scott Spellman is leading the team in an around-the-clock race to reopen the Port of Baltimore. So you have to cut the bridge up to get it out of here. That's correct. The piece that you see above the water here on the front of the vessel weighs anywhere from 3,000 to 4,000 tons. Tonight we'll have one of the largest cranes on the eastern seaboard, so it's at least going to get cut safely into four pieces. They must clear a 700-foot span of the channel by removing many thousands of tons of steel and concrete. It's not just all this debris that you can see in this massive cargo ship. It's also everything that's sunk to the bottom, tons of debris that's 50 feet down. It all has to come off the floor before this channel and the Port of Baltimore can reopen. NTSB investigators were back on the cargo ship Dolly Thursday, interviewing crew members, gathering evidence, and inspecting containers on board. According to the Coast Guard, 14 with hazardous materials were damaged, but the contents, including soap and perfume, are said not to pose a threat to the public. We need to open vessel traffic to the port because the health of the Maryland economy and the national economy depends on it. Last night, Maryland Governor Wes Moore warned the timeline for recovery would be long. Earlier, he appeared at the Baltimore Orioles opening day game, where fans unfurled a replica of the flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write the Star Spangled Banner. The Orioles also honored the construction workers who died in the bridge collapse. And for the first time, we are seeing the hero police officers who stopped traffic before it fell. CBS News spoke with the brother of Mayor Yasser Suazo Sandoval, one of the victims. He says he wished he could have stopped his brother from going to work. Moises Diaz was scheduled to fill potholes on the bridge the night of the collapse, but his shift changed. He says his friend Julio Cervantes survived the collapse by climbing out of his truck as it was sinking, adding Cervantes can't swim, and telling us he thought, I'm going to die here. The Biden administration has approved an initial $60 million to help with the initial response to the bridge collapse. Obviously, the effort will cost much, much more than that. The Army Corps of Engineers is not prepared yet to talk about a timeline for clearing the channel, in part because the job is so substantial. Why does everything have to be cleared out, everything off the bottom of that channel? It's because there's only 12 to 18 inches of clearance between the bottom of the channel and the hull of a cargo ship loaded down with containers, Tony. That is not a lot of leeway. All right, Chris Van Cleve for us in Dundalk, Maryland. Uh, Chris, thank you very much.